Good morning, everybody. Big brother, big brother is watching. It's actually pretty creepy. Isn't it? I heard that expression on and off your whole life, right? Big brother, big brother is watching, right? It's not familiar. This is where that comes from. Now you know. It's become what we call an idiom or it's an expression or something that people say that you're not really going to understand necessarily what it means, like the language doesn't make sense by itself unless you know the associations of it, or especially if you know the origin of it. Now you know the origin. You probably knew the associations, right? It's like somebody's looking over your shoulder or something, right? And now you really know where it came from. Okay, I think that's enough and probably time that we get started. We have a little change plans here that I think will probably sound like a relief to you. Okay, basic routine stuff. Uh, lesson 18 grammar, do that tomorrow night. Just getting started, Alex, all good. Vocab, uh, lesson 10 creative usage, that was due last night, I've checked that. I'm reading those a little more closely lately, you guys are doing some pretty cool stuff. I did see that a few people didn't quite make the transition to using more words on the larger units, so make sure you're using 10 and make sure that you're highlighting them, okay? I don't want to have to dig through, you know, the paragraph and uh, figure out whether you've done that. I want to be able to do a quick glance, even though I'm trying to read them too. Okay, writing. Uh, I'm going to change this right now. What's he going to type next? Oh, look at that. Sorry. Okay, the reason for this uh, is twofold. Um, first of all, I found out from the BLT meeting yesterday, which is the meeting of all the department heads and administrators about everything going on in the school, that uh, remember I was talking about yesterday that you were going to be taking the 10th grade EOC, and then if you pass that, you don't have to take it next year. That was the plan, and they just now kind of figured out that a bunch of ninth grade English teachers are wondering if we're still doing that. Um, we are not, okay, so you are not taking the EOC this year. So whether or not we'll do some time writings, it's still a useful skill, um, but it's really just kind of a miniaturized version of the main papers you're already doing anyway. And with everything going on, I'm certainly just gonna lean away from that right now and so we can concentrate on, you know, it's not like we're not still writing, especially as we kind of build up some of the reader's logs options for, uh, for 1984. So no time to essay tomorrow. And the other thing that we have going on is you guys are getting your scheduling done, right? So it is, um, you know, one, one decision has mostly been made for you unless you kind of disputed it, and that's whether you're taking honors English next year, which most of you, of course, are. And there might be some of you who have either decided to or been recommended to you know, maybe take advance instead of honors. So, so there's that, but then there's also electives, okay? 
So I can talk a little bit about, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that tomorrow, Wednesday, required Wednesday, because everybody should be here. Um, and then also, I'd just like you to have all your scheduling materials on hand, and I'm gonna try to take a little deep dive into that today. So I can help you guys figure out everything that's going on, um, even like choosing your electives, you gotta choose those eight options. You wanna take that seriously and, and, and put real choices for all of them, because you know you might get your sixth, seventh, or eighth choice. You never know, okay? Um, there was one other thing. What was it? Um, oh, yeah. Let me come off share to ask this. Um, I know I don't have the whole class here, but are there any of you who are at home who are going to come back to school starting March 22nd? I'm just curious. You are, Kendall. That's great to hear. I'm just going to kind of mark down because I'm just trying to track this. Anybody else here? Madeline, you're saying you're, you're, saying you're staying home. Okay. Anybody else? It's not, it won't make that much difference with me because I mean, well, actually no, it will because we'll be having class in here, come to think of it, yeah. So I was hoping more of you were, but everybody has the reasons for doing whatever. I'm not gonna try to argue with you about it, but we're trying to kind of figure out what's going on there. So nobody else here. You folks with your cameras off, mystery people. None of you guys coming back? I am so sorry. Can you repeat the question? Because it like froze out. And I didn't hear anything. So oh. Like oh, well, starting March 22nd, uh, everybody who's remote has has a uh, is being encouraged and given the opportunity to come back to school. And I, I hope you guys realize it's not just coming back to school to sit in cohorts. We're going to have a, a classes like like me teaching human beings directly. Um, and then, you know, Madeline, if you stay home, anybody else who continues to stay home, I'm going to figure out a way, hopefully, to Zoom you guys in, and I'll be teaching in the classroom two people, you know, in some sort of majority of the class. But anybody who's staying home will uh, Zoom in. I think I might have someone, like, in the front row, a student, like, run a Zoom or something like that, and they can just kind of point their computer at me, and, and that way I don't have to try to do two things at once, since I'll be operating my view board, you know, smart board type thing. Um, I have a Bluetooth keyboard, and so I can do that for the front of the room and stuff like that. So, so that's going on too. And I just want to ch maybe chat with anybody. It's just going to kind of be a catch-all talk about scheduling and talk about coming back to school, um, answer questions, and just kind of a work help Q and A session. If anybody's wondering about their schedule, where to get, how to get from here to there, and where rooms are and stuff, and scheduling. So it's just going to be we're going to have a day of like just talking about stuff. Okay, maybe you don't have a lot of questions, but that's okay. Let's be here. And let's do that stuff. Okay. All right. So we should get into 1984 because I'm sure we have plenty to talk about. Um, so if you guys can access your materials on that, that would be great. Um, if there are, if, I think I did my last check maybe at the end of the school day yesterday. Okay. I haven't looked this morning. So if anybody else has turned that, you might want to email me to make sure that I, I spot that. First impression so far? Totally upper cheerful story so far, right? <laughs> yeah, you want to be Winston, don't you? <laughs> With his varicose ulcer and drinking his stinky victory gin and you know, living in victory apartments and all that stuff. No, it's 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 dark, right? But uh, I guarantee uh, on some level you'll certainly at least find it uh, interesting or compelling, hopefully intellectually stimulating. Um, I'm going to kind of talk, let's, let's let me take a few notes here. We don't do that very often. Um, I'm just going to kind of talk through what happens. It's not a whole lot that actually happens, mostly in Winston's head, right? Um, and then I'm going to talk about some few basic like literary concepts, and then we'll talk through the questions and maybe your discussion prompt, okay? So in this first part, basically what's happening is we see Winston He's, he kind of comes home to his apartment. It's called London's Victory Mansions, and it's in a place called Airstrip One, okay, which we eventually figure out is England, right? And but 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 Air, Airstrip One, which used to be England, is also a province of a place called Oceania, right? So it's one of three great powers of the world, right? So the world has been consolidated into three great superpowers, right? Which mid 20th century, you know, George Orwell was probably like thinking, all right, you know, the United States and the USSR are becoming the two superpowers. Like, is this going to keep increasing, right? It didn't really do that. You didn't get that right, right? But it's an exaggerated view of the future as, as dystopian literature often is, right? Okay, so there's two others called Eurasia and East Asia. And they seem to be constantly at war with each other, right? As far as we can tell. Um, he goes up and stares into his apartment, and, and we have uh, uh, an acknowledgement of this, this poster of Big Brother, right? And something called a telescreen, right? 
which seems to be a TV, but it seems to be something that also goes both ways, right? So it's monitoring him too. He's under surveillance, right? And so you have this kind of paranoid existence. Um, but he seems to kind of discover that the way that there's a way he can kind of move out of sight, right? Of the telescreen, which he's not used to be doing. So it's kind of weird that he just now notices that was it move? We don't really know. There's a lot of stuff we don't know. A lot of unanswered questions, obviously, right? And he starts writing in a diary, right? And when he's writing a diary, he kind of reflects on uh, something that he's been to recently that sounds like some kind of routine activity he's obliged to take part in called the two minutes of hate, right? And two people that he spotted during that, O'Brien, right? And some dark haired woman that he doesn't know the name of. And he seems to maybe think that there's some kind of connection. Maybe they feel the same discontent uh, that he does. It's not real specific, but that's pretty much all that happens. Right, so it's just kind of Winston in his apartment. We were introduced to some of the basic, like weird concepts of the dystopia, and then we kind of get the feeling he's not too happy. Right, and things aren't good, but he doesn't really know what to do about it. He starts writing strange things in his diary. All right, so let, let, write down. Let's let's write down these four kind of basic uh, literary aspects of the book. Okay, I'm ask you to jot down four things: handwrite, type, whatever you want. And this will be good food for thought when we start doing reader's logs outside the discussion prompt, which I really want to kind of do. Um, first is character. Next is theme. Symbols. Point of view. Okay, one more time. Character, theme, symbols, and point of view. Okay, I think you know what characters are, right? And we, you've learned about round and dynamic characters and things like that and what people are, and how authors portray them. I think you know what theme is in general, right? Like what is the author trying to say? What kind of message is coming out behind the story? Which might be a little bit hard to interpret, you know, at the beginning of a complex book like this, but we still wanna think about where it might be going, right? Even if you're just guessing. Uh, symbols, I'm sure you've studied symbols before. Symbols are kind of, um, it's almost the larger version of figurative language like metaphors and similes, okay? So whereas metaphors and similes, you're comparing something that's there to something that isn't really there. And unlike the comparison with symbol, it's more like something that is there, but it could also stand for, represent, or be a parallel of a whole bunch of other stuff too, okay? So think about what things or people or images might be symbols, might become symbols in the book. And then point of view, there's three different literary points of view. I don't want to tell you what they are. You should know those. We've talked about it before. Okay, so take a few minutes and with any or all of those, jot down any thoughts that you might have so far, even if it's just guessing, you know, perhaps or well will, you know, and then let's share out a little bit and then we'll go through the discussion questions. Great day for participation points. While you guys are working, you can speak up or in chat if you know of anybody else in the class who stays home, who's planning on coming back, a friend or acquaintance of yours. If you can let me know, I'm just trying to kind of discover. I know some people might still be thinking about it, but.
so character wise i know there wasn't a whole lot of time but i want to leave enough time to talk for the questions too character wise winston is all all we really have right how could we what would be some like traits that you would put on what would be some ways you would describe him so far is is who he seems to be his emotional state anything like that um i mean he kind of seems like depressed because he's like drinking that stuff and then he just seems like he's always in a negative point of view or i guess he's just like seems like he's got like a negative view towards the world right now yeah and that doesn't mean he's a negative person necessarily right might mean he just thinks a lot right um but i agree he seems angry he's like full of um, depression or rage or some combination and uh and uh kind of sounds like he doesn't know where to put it right okay uh, good answer anything anything else to add to that i think it's probably what we all see right how about theme that's really early right but even if we don't know exactly what orwell's going to end up saying what does he seem to be dealing with as far as like what this place is showing us um uh, maybe about who controls what and does i do i control my own self or does another person people do that that's great, Lauren, because you're being really broad there, right? And you're broadening out from what's just happening. And you're talking about, uh, you're universalizing it, right? So there's not a time in history where we all shouldn't think to ourselves, you know, do I really control what I think, right? Always a good way to, always a good thing to consider. And that's definitely what he's dealing with. So I think that's a really good answer there. Okay. How about symbols? And I'll just go ahead and say that people can be symbols, right? See anything that could be, it's real, it's there, at least supposedly. Big brother. Mm, absolutely, of course. And that's why it's become such an uh, you know, expression and idiom. Um, might represent you know, control intimidation, authority, or, you know, anything like that. Um, but it's supposed to be, again, the symbol in the society itself, if it's working, seems to be something more of uh, protection and stability and stuff like that, right? But it seems kind of off or wrong to us. All right, um, there's another one. What seems to be kind of the opposite, symbolically like the opposite of Big Brother and what Winston is supposed to be looking at is an evil force. Only briefly mentioned, but Alex? Gold, Goldstein or Goldstein? Yeah, Emmanuel Goldstein. Okay, so he is, uh, seems to be the leader of some kind of resistance or something, right? We don't even know whether these people are real, right? <laughs> but uh, they're talked about a lot. Right? And what Winston is supposed to think is that Big Brother is, 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 is watching you, but also watching over you. And then Emmanuel Goldstein could, could ruin everything about this world that's supposed to be a good place. Right? Okay, good enough on this. So we're gonna take things like that eventually and move away from the you know kind of prefabricated discussion prompts and have you guys just kind of look more for passages that you find interesting and attach them to those concepts. That's the way I really like to do things. So let's get to the questions before you move We're out of time. I do not have a second bell today, so I can, I can run a little bit later than we usually do. First question was, how does the description of London in the opening pages set the mood for the novel and use details from this text to support your question? So maybe not that different from how some cities can feel, right? But uh, how's it described? Especially if you have a quote, that'd be great. Ella? Um, I put... The description of London in the opening pages set the mood of the novel to be very dark, dreary, and sad. On page two, it says, the world looked cold, whirling dust and torn paper into spirals, and the thought of sun was shining in the sky, a harsh blue. There seemed to be no color in anything. This shows that if you were there, um, you were probably in a state of sadness. Yeah, gloom and doom, darkness, dust, and for even the sun to be described as to describe as a harsh blue, you know, the place doesn't feel good. That's a paradoxical way to describe sunlight, isn't it? So, yeah, um, like Winston's overall uh, demeanor and mood, uh, the setting seems to kind of fit that too. Okay, good. Um, same question is, what is ironic 
about the three slogans and the four ministries of the party. Let's go over what those are first. Maybe one at a time. How about the slogans first? Can someone name the three slogans that are given? Did you write that down? They're not only ironic, I would call them uh, oxymoronic, if you know that word. Go ahead, Alex. The three are war is peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Okay. So what those seem to be doing is kind of justifying things to be good that normally would have bad associations, right? In other words, war is what you want, right? Um, being made to do everything like a slave is okay. That's how we're free. And not knowing anything is the best way for you to be in a good place and to actually be strong, right? Now, if you really think about those things, um, they are really oxymorons, right? They're, they're, they're irrational, contradictory uh, statements. And, it's, and, you, and you see that sometimes in political slogans, but this is of course an exaggeration, right? So it seems to the point of being ridiculous, but that's what makes it scary. Right, the fact that you know, if you you know, if you suspend your disbelief, as we say in literature, and yes, do you have a photo of Armstrong? Um, do you mean in class? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, she's in my. Are you picking your so-and-so? Is he typically there today? Um, I have no idea. Oh, okay. I have a senior cohort, so. Well, I guess I guess she's a good student, and she comes. A couple days a week. I just I cannot locate her, so I would go on her schedule to see maybe if she was there. But when she when she started to come back, they had her up in uh, 343 with uh, one of the music teachers. 343. Uh, yeah. Right there. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Okay. Where was I? Uh, okay. Yeah. So the three things. Um, we're supposed to give us an idea of how, how much, it seems like there's brainwashing going on here, right? Like how could, how could a society possibly believe all those three things? And then you wonder, do they all possibly believe those things to be rational? We don't know yet, right? Because all we know is Winston. Um, okay, um, what else? How about the four ministries? What are the ministries and what do they do? Even if you just name one at a time, you don't have to go all four if you don't want. All right, Ella, go ahead. Um, so, um... The first one is Ministry of Peace, um, which it says it concerned itself with war. Yeah, waging war, right? Of course. You know, we have a little bit of that, right? Because like when we say it seems kind of weird um, when, you know, on and off in various times, necessarily or not, we are waging wars and we call the Department of Defense, right? And you can argue that's what you're doing, right? When you when you have to, when you when you carry out attack, but it is it is kind of weird. Right. So this is like an exaggeration of that. All right. What else? Roman. Ministry of truth and ministry of love. Okay. Ministry of truth, which takes part in what sounds like revisionist history. Right. They re they seem to revise historical facts. Right. Which is anything but the truth, but it creates a new truth. Um, the other one you said was mystery of what? Love. Love, okay, which does what to people? Sounds like it maybe tortures or punishes them, right? And then we have a ministry of plenty, which uh, causes shortages. And we might be able to infer that that would be to keep people hungry or wanting on some level, because then the government is always... Um, fighting to get you enough when in fact they're the ones who are like limiting it enough to keep you hungry in the first place right see that trick there okay so we'll be talking more about those so i'm going to move on for now uh three what is the significance of winston's sudden ability to remember a uh, sudden inability to remember what he was going to write kind of a hard question there thoughts what does it kind of suggest about his uh I don't know his ability to concentrate, his attention span, and what that might have to do with the, you know, the, the, his existence in his world. I'd love to hear from some of the others of you. Brandon. 
afraid and I saw you lean forward. I thought you were gonna unmute yourself. Stop teasing me. <laughs> All right, Ella, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say that um, it's big because he's in, he's like around the, a lot of people and especially during the two minute hey where like they're like all like like shouting like bb like he's in this world where it's easily to get it's very easily to get like manipulated so the fact that he can like remember stuff and he can write it down and not like get sidetracked and then he also can't remember most of his childhood mm, so that's, really that's sure. weird yeah i'm not sure exactly why he can't remember that right now but that's i I think that's, it's part because he's finally remembering something like that. Yeah, that's pretty ominous, you know, that he can't remember much of that. There's definitely something wrong there as far as how we would see it. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of chanting and taking part in stuff, you know, where you're not really thinking, you're just kind of group thinking with a bunch of people and saying slogans and stuff. But then when he tries to like really, re, he, he's, he's maybe reasoning more than other people and then he's maybe trying to kind of break out of this brainwashing, but it's not easy. He can't keep his train of thought uh, very easily. Okay, moving on to four. Uh, why is Winston's memory of the two minutes of hate important for him to write down? Well, kind of the same kind of thing, right? Um, for one thing, because he wants to kind of actually analyze, you know, what's been going on and reflect on it instead of just taking part in it mindlessly. But also, it's because of the two people that we mentioned when I was kind of summarizing the action so far um, that he wants to remember what did that interaction with them mean? You know, he had eye contact with them and he just kind of had the feeling these people are not brainwashed, they have some uh, discontentment, you know, that suggests maybe they're trying to think too. So he's not letting go of that, right? And he seems to just kind of have this hatred and disgust uh, toward the government for some reason, even though he might not even understand why yet. And the last question was, what do Winston's final words in the diary reveal about him? And he starts, he starts writing it over and over again, almost like in a rage, right? In a literary rage. What does he write? What, is, what, are, what are those words, you guys? Alex. The last thing he writes in the diary is, they'll shoot me, I don't care. They'll shoot me in the back of the neck. I don't care, down with Big Brother. They always shoot you in the back of the neck. I don't care, down with Big Brother. Yeah. And, and there's like no punctuation or anything in that. Yes, yeah. So that's kind of strange. It's almost, you can't tell whether it's like he can't put together full sentences themselves or whether it's just kind of like desperate stream of consciousness. Um, in the way he, he also mentions while he's doing that there's something called thought crime right and it's almost and it's, it's so mentioned at some point that says there's not even really laws it's just you're supposed to understand everything that you should and shouldn't do and if you start even thinking wrong then you just disappear right so it's really really down tight uh, the control that they have over everyone so this uh, this this uh this concept of thought crime, like before you even do anything, they have some way of knowing that you're thinking something wrong. So it's almost like he is acknowledging that he's being suicidal to even think this and write it down, even though theoretically nobody's there. But of course the televisor is there, but he's hoping he's outside of it. So we don't know where this is gonna lead, but he's disturbed and, and scared to death. But at the same time, there's this kind of inspiration, right? Of like, of like waking up and, and not being brainwashed. Um, further and further we get into this, I'm sure you can see how this relates to all kinds of dystopian and maybe some sci-fi stories and, uh, and movies that you've seen before with being surveilled and wondering if you're going to get caught and waking up from being brainwashed and again this is where it all comes from so okay we probably better go i know we didn't really talk about the discussion prompt directly but uh make sure you were doing that um we'll go ahead and stick with that since i don't have a lot of time to talk about something else yet and then probably as we get later to the book we'll start doing uh different reader's logs so i changed the due date originally i had it due uh, tonight you have until tomorrow night um but even though it's part one chapters two and three it's only 16 pages it's a little bit less than what you just read so that shouldn't be any problem to finish by tomorrow night review on thursday um tomorrow we'll remember have your scheduling stuff you know handy and we're just we'll talk about all this stuff and i'll try to educate my, myself a little bit more on, on what's going on with that and make sure i can answer your questions okay chock full today any questions from you guys about any of that you all good Okay, thanks for being here. See you tomorrow.